our first video um, was about choosing a university. And I said I would add to that by, by looking at some of the prospectuses and things for the universities. I thought what might be helpful is not just for me to look up all the prospectuses and tell you about the universities in Scotland, but actually for me to show you how to look up each university yourself. Um, normally, the first thing you would do to find out more about a university is to go to the open day. Um, but because of the coronavirus, there won't be as many open days and they'll be doing them online. And the difficulty even with the open days is they present the best bits of a university and not necessarily a very real experience of what will go on. And um, so on, on, on the days that you go to an open day, they don't lecture you like you go to a lecture. They have a, a brief talk about something and show some, some of the best things and some of the opportunities and some of the exciting stuff, which is great. It's good to learn about what's available. Um, but maybe you miss out on actually the real stuff of what university would be like at that place. Um, so um, online as well, um, they'll not be able to show you around the halls or anything like that. And if they show you pictures of the halls, they'll show you the best two rooms in all of the halls of residence and things like that, rather than showing you a very real experience of sharing a corridor with 500 mental heads. You know, so um, what you want to know is what is it really like at different universities. Um, so open days are helpful, and if they're doing online open days and you're interested in universities, just go to as many as possible. Um, find out about a whole lot of different universities, just so you can think about them and compare them and think about them differently and say, okay, well, what did I like about that? And what did I not like about that? I'll take you to one or two um, of the websites now um, and show you different university websites and, and how they present themselves on the web and what's available through the websites and what, what information you can find there. Thirdly, you would be looking at a prospectus um, and you'll get them on the websites. Um, so we'll look, when we look at the websites, we'll, we'll show you some of the prospectuses, prospecti, who knows, prospectus uh, from some of the universities. And then it's really helpful if you can find somebody who already goes to the university and give you some idea about it. What we were thinking about is after we've done these three videos, um, we'll try and set a date for a Zoom chat uh, for students from the school um, to talk to myself, uh, to some of the teachers who know about the, the sort of UCAS applications and things like that, um, and maybe some former students of, of uh, Danoon Grammar School who go to different universities. Uh, we'll not be able to get all 15, um, but, but certainly two or three that you can get different ideas, um, and that would be something we could probably do. Um, so that's very helpful to ask some of the more odd questions. Um, it's very helpful to read the prospectus and find out about the courses and what grades you need to get in. Um, but there's actually more to university life than that. And you'll want to ask people about it who know what they're doing. Um, so we'll, we'll try and maybe do that at the end. But let's do the videos first. And what I'm going to do now is take you to um, the website um, of, of a university. What, what really is the best thing to do is just to go to Google. And, and type in um, universe, St Andrews University, for example. We're, we're, um, I'll show you the list of universities. Um, the University of St Andrews is the oldest one on this list. These are the 15 universities in Scotland. Uh, St Andrews, Glasgow, Aberdeen and Edinburgh are all really old universities. Uh, Strathclyde is old but only became a university in the 60s. Harriet Watt, Dundee, Stirling, Napier, uh, Robert Gordon, which is in Aberdeen as well. Um, Glasgow Caledonian, Abertay, uh, Queen Margaret is uh, started off um, with very specific subjects um, so it's, it's a university but it's, it's not a university for many 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 subjects um, but it's in Edinburgh and uh, the University of West of Scotland has several campuses, Paisley, Hamilton, Dumfries and Eyre, um, there you are. And then the Highlands and the Islands has campuses all over the place. We'll show you them in a minute. Um, but if you even look at this list and then click on the University of St Andrews, it should take you to their website and, and you can look at it there. Um, if you just type into University of St Andrews, let me see if I can type it properly. Um, into Google, there you are, and you can look at their website. And um, what we'll do with this is just take you through it. The, they really have this website set up for people to try and come. Um, so the first thing they're wanting you to do is find about, about courses and things like that. So they're looking for new students um, and they're, they're, they're orienting at the moment 
um, the new students that are starting in 2020, but also they're interested in people who are interested in studying at St Andrews. Um, so if we click on study at St Andrews, um, they'll give you some of the why St Andrews and we can, we can look at that sort of stuff. That will include more of the material around um, you know, what it's like, what the location is, um, all, all the different facilities, what's good about St Andrews, um, clubs and societies will be in there and lots of things like that. Um, but further down, you'll see some of the ideas of student experiences and applications and, and things like that. It's a very, very decent website. Um, if you want to look at subjects, they just give you a list of the subjects that they do. And actually, when you look at their perspectives, you can see you can choose, say, for example, some of the languages, Spanish and Russian, with something else, Spanish and film studies, for example. Um, so there's lots of um, things you can do. Um, if we go back to um, their site, um, you should be able to find the prospectus on here somewhere. So um, if we look for the prospectus, oh, it's, there we are, and it'll just download for you, um, undergraduate prospectus, um, and it'll talk about uh, what's available. So here we can download it as a PDF. And it's about 2021 entry when, when you're looking to go next year. Um, the prospectus is 125 pages normally, and 100 of them are about the different courses they offer. So the, the front blurb and the, the starter stuff is interesting to most people. Then there's all the courses in the middle, and then there'll be a few pages at the end, I don't know, maps and things that, that are interesting and that might be interesting to everybody. But there's a whole load of that 125 pages you'll not be interested in. The University of St. Andrews has their prospectus here, um, and it talks you through it. So um, you've got your welcome, the degree structure, choosing your subjects, life at St. Andrews. Um, and then it's also... Uh, going then through the list of subjects so that academic subjects goes 90 pages in the middle of it there and then there's a bit more on how to apply and so on. So let's have a quick run through. Um, I'm generally not interested in the uh, professor in charge of it or the pro vice chancellor or whatever. Uh, the pro vice chancellor of the university I went to is an actor and he's uh, very cool but anyway here we go. Um, studying at St Andrews offers you the opportunity to learn at one of the most extraordinary universities in the world. Most of our degree programmes are four years long and the flexible degree structure allows you to study multiple subjects. Um, so it's helpful to know that they, they're happy for people to combine uh, the subjects that they're in. And then they'll look at different uh, faculties, different degree types. Uh, single honours degree is, is the one where you only do one subject and joint honours is where you do more than one. Um, and something that is with something is one where you focus on one subject, but you do a little bit of French. So, you know, psychology with French has a little bit of French in it, but mostly is psychology. Um, and then you can go straight to uh, uh, master's degrees. Some, some universities will offer particular courses that are straight masters, um, and that's a, a higher level of qualification um, and, and so on. Um, they talk about the stru structure here. It's very simple. Basically, you enter a degree, you do your first year subjects, your second year subjects, your th third year subjects, and your fourth year subjects. And if you're doing joint honours, you just split between some of them. Um, but, but simply, they're trying to say that this is how it works. Um, so um, third and fourth years are honours, and fifth years if you're doing straight masters, um, of, or adding additional year on to the course. So um, I've, uh, I've done a wee bit with St Andrews, not actually studied there, but I've visited there. I've, I've stayed in their halls and, and had courses there um, because it started off as a theology college and I'm a minister. So some of the minister programs run there. And so I, I know a little bit about St Andrews. They talk a little bit about societies, volunteering, about clubs, about well-being, about the sports in the area. And, and they're, they're just trying to highlight some of the things that they think you would be interested in bringing you to the town. If you're a golfer, St Andrews sounds great, doesn't it? Actually, um, one of the other universities, the University of the West of Scot uh, University of Highlands and Islands, offers a professional golf program. So if you've got a low golf handicap, they'll, they'll do, give you a degree in being a golfer. Um, so there you go. But anyway, there's lots of interesting things there. They talk about the traditions of the area and some of the, um, so the, the PH, 
oh, you don't want to stand on the pH, and all these interesting little stories and things that are, are interesting to some people. And they talk about the sports here, but it's only brief. If you're interested in finding out more about uh, the clubs and societies, the sports and the traditions, look more onto the website. There's far more on the website, but the prospectus gives you some of that we draw into some of the exciting things. Um, uh, I have played football and some of their facilities are quite good at St. Andrews University. I've played football on their AstroTurf pitches and things. There's some nice areas, but anyway, uh, I've never played any of their indoor sports, so I, I couldn't tell you exactly what their sports centres are like or anything like that. I know some of the sports centres because I've played volleyball in Edinburgh, Harriet Watt, Napier, and probably some of the other ones in Glasgow, uh, Strathclyde, I think I've played there. So there's lots of uh, sports um, and interesting things if you're interested in music and uh, stuff like that. Then the prospectus starts to tell you about things that will vary from university to university. Um, accommodation is, um, if, if you go to the open day, they'll show you their best accommodation. I've stayed in a couple of places. Um, I've stayed in uh, this place, uh, David Russell, I think. I've stayed in St. Salvador's Hall. Um, I've stayed in, in different parts of it. Um, and they'll show you the best rooms when you look at the website and so on. It's not very realistic, um, but they do offer catered halls and uh, self-catered halls. So most universities just offer self-catering, um, but St. Andrews has a big catered section and that's quite handy, but it's quite expensive. And the food's amazing. The food I had when I stayed in St. Andrews was brilliant, um, but it's quite a lot of money. And normally I wouldn't eat that much, um, but I felt like to get my money's worth, I had to stuff myself. Uh, so anyway, they have all these uh, different halls with different experiences. And you can look up more about each hall of residence on the website and you can book halls of residence once you've been accepted or once uh, once you're preparing to go and um, you can start booking the beds in the halls of residence and say i want a room most of them uh, most halls of residence in most universities are single rooms and a lot of their universities will have single rooms with an ensuite bathroom and um, the majority of of accommodation is going that way because that's what most people like um, but they're all different styles of accommodation and it's worth looking up what the accommodation's like and how much it costs because that's a big factor on how you get on it at university. Um, some universities, when you've done one year, you, you almost everybody after their first year will not stay in student halls the second year. If you're living in Glasgow, for example, and going to one of the universities in Glasgow, you maybe go to the university halls the first year, but most students in the second year, third year, fourth year will find a house with some of the friends they've made in the first year and share a house with some of those guys. And there's lots of houses near the university. Other universities are, are more, you'll stay in the halls for a number of years. And um, the whole town of St. Andrews really is connected to the university. St. Andrews is known for two things, the university and golf. And so you have a lot of um, uh, B&Bs where people come and stay to go and play golf. And you have a lot of student accommodation and student things. It's actually quite an expensive town. Um, just, you know, your burger instead of being £2.50 is £3.50 or £4.50. And um, your, your shopping, will, you know, instead of going to Tesco's it's the co-op and, and it'll be you know 10% or 20% dearer and um, so it is it isn't a cheaper town to live in but um, the whole town's connected you with the university and it's quite a, a quite an easy place to connect with some people there will be jobs to get in the town and things like that and there are lots of shops in the town but finding out more about the town is also helpful and um, when you're looking around so they'll tell you a bit about the accommodation, what's available. As you can see here, they're saying they've got catered accommodation and self-catered accommodation. And um, so each of the halls sets has different areas where they've got combined rooms or you've got your individual room with your own facilities. At almost all universities, you'll get your own room. At most you'll be sharing with one other person and that's only if you choose that kind of halls of residence. Um, but they'll all have little kitchens and uh, dining areas to share among a, a number of students okay so there there are occasionally shared twin rooms most people have their individual study rooms and then there's kitchens that connect them and, and so on so you can hang out with those that live near you 
Um, there's lots of stuff they'll tell you. I mean, they're talking about welfare here. What would interest me here is really the, the stuff to do with disabilities and things like um, if you've got uh, dyslexia or something, how they, how they work with that. Um, I, I got involved as well, as he says here, the university chaplaincy. Um, the chaplaincy is a very helpful group of people, just um, ministers from different backgrounds who support students. And each university has quite different ch uh, chaplaincy provisions. Some of them have almost none, and some of them have quite a lot. So um, if you're interested in, in things like that, there's people who are around. And um, so there is support and, and welfare for people. Um, to encourage students and I, I actually provided disability support for a blind guy and a deaf guy at, at one university that I, I, I helped them study. So I took notes for the blind guy and because I knew him I, I taught him some mathematics and things and uh, I provided support for him as he studied his degree. So, so they, they can provide um, support for disabled students or um, they, they will give for example, a bit of extra time for students with dyslexia and exams or, or, um, or things like that. But mostly, um, I'm not too stressed about a lot of the information they'll give you in the prospectus, the study facilities and so on. Every, every university has a library. Every, every university has somewhere you can sit and study. Every university has Wi-Fi. None of this is groundbreaking. Um, they can talk about some of the access and employability. It's really hard to tell that, even if they say, you know, 99.2% of our students are employed within six months or a year of leaving. It, that can mean so many different things. They can, they, you know, they can only contact so many students and ask them why they're getting on and so on. Um, so they do do stuff with alumni, students who've finished their courses. Um, but a lot of it, it's hard to tell. As I said, they'll always present the best case um, for any university. Some of the things that do interest me are things like studying abroad, the exchange programs they offer. One of the things that St. Andrews does, um, the, the, Erasmus is available in most universities. Um, it's a, a student exchange where you spend the time in another university in Europe or in America or something, and then student, a student from that university will come to your university. So it's a common student exchange. Um, but I think St. Andrews had a particular link with a university in America. I noticed it when I was flicking through this, which sounded, uh, there it is there, uh, William and Mary in the USA. They have a particular um, course that they run collaboratively with a university in America. So by going to St. Andrews, you're also going to this university in America and you'll get to do part of your course there. Uh, that sounds quite interesting. Those kind of things interest me. Okay, so again, uh, there's lots of opportunities and there's opportunities for international students to come to Scotland and study. And I love the international student stuff and I got involved even though I was a local person. They loved having local people who would get involved and help with the programs. And I helped with the International Student Society in my university and got to lower a load of students um, and still keep in touch with quite a few of them on the web um, and so on. It's a wonderful picture here you have of St. Andrews, isn't that very nice? All these things are in the prospectus and very in interesting, but really the key to it is the courses that they offer. What they'll do for each course is they'll talk about the faculty that it's in, so they'll have several faculties. The university that I went to had about oh, uh, 14 faculties or um, some of them. So we had a separate faculty for civil engineering, for electrical engineering, for mechanical engineering, uh, and for, for aeronautical engineering. And yet some people just would have a, a faculty of engineering or even include it in a faculty of science and just make it a bigger group. It really depends how many courses they offer for each course or for each in, in each faculty and how they split it up. But it's just a simpler way of, of breaking it into groups. Um, when you're thinking about going to university, you should have some ideas of what you're interested in. I wouldn't be too narrow in that. We'll talk about which uh, courses you should try or which, uh, how to apply for courses and so on, and which courses to apply for in the next video. Um, but when you're looking at the prospectus, you're really interested to see what, what courses they offer. And that's a, a huge part of the prospectus. So their four faculties are the arts, uh, divinity, medicine, and science. Um, it started as a, a, a divinity college, a, a 
a Bible teaching college, which is why divinity is still a, a, a separate faculty. Uh, medicine is separate because it's, it, it, it's specific. Um, but most things these days are arts and science because the degree that you get will be an MA or a BA honors or an, a BSc or an MSc, right? Uh, because it's from that faculty. Um, so that's how they've split up. So they'll show you each subject that they do then, and the next 90 pages are each subject in turn. I, I'm not hugely interested in ancient history and archaeology, but let's have a look at uh, this subject and what, what they give you the information about it. They give you the different levels that are available. So you can go straight to the MA, you can do the BA, and again, this international honours is the one where they mix with the other universities, so you could do it um, together with that other university in America if you were interested in that. And you could do it as a joint honours and still get an MA, so you do it with something else. Um, so they're offering different levels. Uh, to get into each level, you will need certain grades, right? Okay, so there's the standard entry grades at A levels. Standard entry grade is AAA, and minimum entry grade is ABB. So it really depends. If they have a, a standard good year of, of a high lot of people applying for the courses, then the standard that you'll need to get in will be AAA. Um, but if it's a, a low year and they don't have many applications, maybe you would get in with ABB. Um, obviously, in Scotland, it will be the, the hires. And again, they'll give you the sort of grades that you're needing to get in. Some of you already have done some hires and will already have some of those grades and you'll have predicted grades. And so you'll know whether it's likely that you'd be able to get into that course or not. St. Andrews having quite the prestige, being the oldest university in Scotland, um, having the reputation, you know, with the prince uh, coming to, to study there and lots of, um, you know, high level stuff going on. The entry grades tend to be quite high and they get a lot of international students looking to study there and they, and they want to keep the prestige up. So they keep the standards quite high. But that, that's what they, what they will tell you uh, how hard it is to get in, the entry requirements. But then they give you a little bit about each each year. So what's available, the different topics maybe, uh, what you study each year, ancient history, ancient history and archaeology. In, in uh, second year you'll study some other things, third and fourth year. Usually most degrees that are offered, by the time you get into third and fourth year, you're selecting more options, you're choosing specific things that you want to study. So for each degree that they offer, they will give you a page on that degree and what's available and what the requirements are. They'll have additional information on some of the bigger areas. And it's worth, if you're interested in, let's say you're interested in medicine, you would look at the medicine page. You might look at some of the other medical related things, whether that's um, pharmacy, uh, nursing, uh, some of the other things like physiotherapy or occupational therapy or some of the more specific um, like speech and language therapy. Um, but you could have a look at that if you're interested in the medical areas. Look at each of the pages, entry requirements, things that are going on. Have some idea of what it'll take to get into the college and what the course might be like. So that's what these um, videos help you do. Or these uh, prospectuses, sorry, help you do. They take you through each course that they offer and how, uh, how you get in and what that course might look like. It's very brief, it's only one page on each. Um, certainly, uh, you know, there's the modules that open up and the opportunities that open up. Uh, you'll not find all that on, on this one page. Um, but each subject that they do um, will, will be on here somewhere. And as I said, if you're interested in medicine, you need to find all the universities in Scotland that are interested in, that offer medicine, and then you compare them. You see what you think of each one. If you're interested in um, sociology, psychology, something like that, um, then anthropology, sociology, psychology, look at all the universities that offer all these subjects, and you, there's loads of them, and you'll be comparing probably 12 of the 15 universities and the subjects that they're offering and how they might look. Um, and we'll talk about subjects next time, but it, it's certainly worth, when you're thinking about which university to go to, that is very much tied up with which subject because the subjects are only available at some universities and universities only do some subjects. And um, so it's worth finding out as much as you can. Obviously the pictures and things in each one, oh, doesn't it look great? Well, they're showing you the very best bits of their, 
their university, um, which is good, but it's not necessarily a very um, natural uh, picture of what goes on. Um, I was sitting in, in my university one day as a student, and everybody else had gone home. A friend was chatting to me, and I was playing the guitar. And a guy walked past with a camera, and he stopped and he said, is it okay if I take your picture? And I said, it's sure, if you want. Um, he said, I just want a typical shot of what happens in the university. I thought, I've never seen anybody else but me sitting in the university playing the guitar in the middle of a mall. Um, but he took this university, and the next year it was in the prospectus. Oh, come to our university. People sit around and play the guitar all the time. Well, they don't, but, you know, they show you the best bits. Um, so this, this little thing here is quite interesting. They, they were sort of saying you can combine things. If you're doing languages, you can combine languages with different things. And this shows the sort of uh, combined subjects you can do. So I find that quite interesting. Uh, when they're talking about modern languages, there are those combined subjects you can mix in together. And that's quite, quite interesting to find out. Um, so it's, it's good to look through the prospectus to stop on the subjects that you're interested in, the fire past the ones you're not interested in. Um, social anthropology is of no interest to me, um, but to some other people that's life and excitement. I'll talk quickly about how to apply. Almost all the applications through for all the university is through UCAS. Okay, so that's a separate topic. You do that, the teachers at the school help you through the UCAS stuff and we can help you talk about how to apply and um, what your personal statement should be like um, and so on. But um, the idea is that almost all the universities in Scotland, that's how you apply to them uh, through UCAS. Okay, uh, so there are other direct applications that people can put in, but mostly because we're in Scotland, it's UCAS that you use. It, they're saying international students can put in direct applications, but really it's the, the uh, UCAS. And now, if you're, if you're looking at medicine, it needs to be in early, obviously, uh, for St Andrews, but all the other subjects, 15th of January, so you've got a little bit of time. But you should be looking at these courses now and making some ideas and putting your UCAS application together. The, your qualifications, again, helps you think about where, what you've already got and what you're, what you're looking to get and what you're expected to get and the entry requirements. So have a quick look through all of that application process, although you'll find that almost all the universities are the same. Uh, fees, funding and scholarship is worth reading, although they will, because the prospectus goes out and it lasts, the prospectus will be out there and people will be looking at it two or three years later. So they don't put figures in it. Um, so you'll see very rarely does it say, uh, a year's study will cost you X amount of pounds for a BA honors or whatever it is. They don't do that most of the time because every year that number changes. And so if somebody's looking at the prospectus two years later, they think, okay, so it's 4,300. And then they go to apply and it's suddenly 4,900. And they're like, but why the extra 15%? Um, so that's why they don't put the fees in. They say you can look them up here, St Andrew's study and fees, finding out undergraduate uh, tu tu tuition fees and so on for, for different people. Um, they're on the website and you can look them up. Um, so there's all of that. And then they have all these weird little extra helpful bits. Where is St Andrew's? Well, if you want to get there from Dunoon, you probably don't need the map of the world. You probably don't need the map of Europe. Um, but anyway, there's again another one of those tables about the joint degrees that they offer and different subjects. Um, and then there's a wonderful picture of St. Andrews. You'll see again, I was talking about different types of university. St. Andrews is a university town. And so the whole town is really connected with university. And you can see then the halls are, are right across the town and um, the different uh, subjects are, are done in different parts of the town. Um, so there's, there's buildings all over the place, all connected with the university. And then there's a whole bunch of houses. Um, so it, it is, uh, St Andrews is an easy one to look at, um, to get the prospectus and to have a look at there. Uh, what we'll do is go back to the website and just look at some of the other things that are helpful. Um, on the website, so why St Andrews? Um, we'll talk about the student experience um, and so on, student life. Um, the facilities that they have is, is quite interesting. 
Um, so you, what would you be interested in? Are you more interested in which university has the best sports center? Um, you love the gym, you love playing football, you, you want the best facilities for that. Well, then look up what their facilities are like at each university. Um, other people are more interested in what clubs and nightlife there is, what things are around. And then you might be more interested in the student life in the town. This will also tell you a little bit about the clubs and societies and clubs and societies interest me. They say here that at St Andrews, there's over 150 different societies, and you can look them up here on the Student Association website. Now, if you look through these, a lot of these will be of no interest to you, but really a good question is, well, how will I make friends? How will I fit in in this place? And the best way to fit in is to meet people who like things that you like. And um, so if you're into astrology, there you go, there's an astrology society. Maybe you're more interested in the Argentine tango. Um, uh, there you go. And there's all these different ones, the Blood Donation Society. Um, not always my cup of tea or your cup of tea. There'll be out of the 150, 145 will have been no interest to you. But there might be four or five where you think, actually, you know, I quite like a game of chess. Or um, Mary's Meals is also on this list. I had a look at that. We support them. Uh, from the church, so it's good to see them on there. There's a geography society, go and see the world. There's a gaming society, I assume that's a, a computer gaming society, but it might be a board games kind of society, I'd want to know what they do there. And what they do at the start of term is they have these kind of get-togethers where people can come along and find out about them and find out about what each society does. Um, and they call them different things in different universities, um, but basically there's a day where you go and find out about all the clubs. Um, and there's all sorts of things. So Labour and the Conservatives have their own society. There's a law society. They were the dirtiest football team at my university. The law society, very, very nasty. Um, there's a poker society. I like a wee game of poker um, and so on. But there's lots of interesting things. And along with the societies, then there's the clubs and the sports. Um, on this website, in the St. Andrew's one, um, they didn't put them together. I, I find them easier when they're uh, together. But obviously the sports, um, you want to find out about them as well and all the different clubs. So if you click on sport, it'll take you through uh, St. Sport and it's saying 100 different competitive sports teams from 50 clubs. That means a lot of the clubs have, maybe they've got three or four rugby teams or three or four football teams, men's and women's clubs. Um, I really enjoyed the, the clubs. I, I picked volleyball um, because not many people played it and you could get to know the whole group of people that played volleyball and the men and the women played together. That was always a bonus. And there was a lot of hanging out and socializing. And in the, in the first year I took the game up, I got to go to all these tournaments all over Ireland um, because I got straight into the team because nobody else was there. And um, so it's interesting to find out with the different sports clubs. There they are, the full list of all University of St. Andrews sports clubs. And you can find out about the different sports you can do. Um, I've played a couple um, for Northern Ireland. I played beach volleyball for Northern Ireland. And I played uh, dodgeball. I, do they, do, they don't even have a dodgeball club. What sort of university is that? Um, but they have all these weird ones. I, I played a lot of ultimate frisbee. I wanted to play that for Northern Ireland too, um, but uh, I never got the chance. But there's different, uh, different clubs that you can join. Um, what's really interesting about the clubs is, um, for example, one of my friends did sub-aqua at university. And because he did sub-aqua, he could do some of the sub-aqua courses. And a course that would normally cost you a thousand pounds would cost you 50 pounds through the club. Through, this, through the university, and that's amazing. My friend Gustavo, who, who, who played volleyball with me, joined the Subaqua Club, did all the certificates for diving, for deep sea diving, and because he did those courses, he got a job um, lecturing at a university in Mexico and doing research um, in, in aquatic um, life, um, sea biology, marine biology, which is amazing because he joined that club and did the courses for a lot less than they would cost. So there's uh, amazing opportunities and um, lots of different clubs and societies and you can find out about them on the website too. So on the website you can find about funding, what it'll cost, about the accommodation, how to book that and when to book that, um, about different things that go on at St Andrews or whatever university you're looking at and the subjects that they offer and that'll take you the prospectus. Does that all make sense? So hopefully, um, if you look up each university, you can find out about them. Now, what I thought you might find interesting is also looking at the Highlands and Islands. 
And um, if you start with the University of the Highlands and Islands, this is the, the prospectus, we'll come back to that. But the first thing to do with the Highlands and Islands is look at the campuses. I mean, they have campuses all over Scotland. It is a, a massive university. There's us uh, down in Dun uh, Dunoon there. Um, that's the University of Highlands and Islands, it, our guide college. And there's the list of all the different locations they have there. So the campus is all over the place. And that means when they offer courses, and um, there's courses in all sorts of different things, but they're all in different places. And some of them are very specific. Uh, so they're specific to particular jobs. Um, so as I said, they, they do a golf, um, golf management, but they do one for actually um, professional golf. Um, and you can be a professional golfer through their things or... There it is, professional golf with the PGA, and you can find out about these courses there. Um, but it's interesting to see how they do it slightly differently. They present all the things, but because their campuses are all over the place, each of these subjects might uh, be in different campuses, so you'll not meet everybody. And um, They've got sort of modern music, uh, music and the environment, um, and so on. They've got different kinds of, um, they've got some of the, the more like, common ones like psychology and sociology are available at almost every university um, but some of them are you know very specific to the highlands and islands so game keeping with wildlife management i have a friend who actually was a game keeper and i, I know a young man who's, who keeps uh, uh, an estate for somebody as well so these things are interesting it also tells you the levels that are available and whether they're part-time or full-time and um, almost all of them are available both ways and some of them will be done um, online and, and through distance learning and things like that. And um, whenever we look at their website as well you'll also be able to get the prospectus um, and you can download it here and you can have a look at their prospectus and it'll take you through the different programs. Now because it's a, 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 a sort of vocational university one of the things that they're very big on is saying there's different levels you can get into on these courses. And they focus more on the course than maybe the whole university experience. Um, so um, access courses to PhDs. So you start at, at, at a lower than university level and you can go through the degree level, the master's level, the PhD, and you can join at different points. Obviously you're coming out of school with, if you're coming out of school with just um, your, um, your uh, earlier, courses, your first set of uh, hires or whatever, you, you, you'll come in at one level. But if you've done two, two years of hires and have more, um, you'll come in at a higher level and so on. And that actually explains some of that in the entry requirements. So they're saying, you know, if you've, if you've studied just your NAT fives and standard grades or in, intermediate two or whatever, you can get into some of these access courses and they will take you into the next years or you can do a, a, a joining program. But if you've got already got hires or A-levels, you come in at a different level of the course, you can go in straight into the first year of the degree. If you've got three plus hires, if you only get two hires, you do an HND and then eventually work into the degree. If you've only got one hire, then you come in and do an HNC, or if you've got an NBQ, you can come in and do an HNC. So it's quite interesting that they're saying you can join at different levels with, with the qualifications you have and work through it. Um, so if, if you're feeling like you can't get into university because your grades haven't been that great, well, there, this university, the University of the Highlands and Islands, will offer some of the same courses, and you, there might be a way to get into it through access courses, through NBQs, or through um, doing HNDs. Uh, higher national diploma is uh, the way it worked in the university I, I went to first of all you did your HND for two years and then you could actually go straight into the third year of the degree and you'll see so if you had two hires and start the HND you actually can leave with the HND after two years or go straight into the third year there and that actually means you haven't lost any years on somebody who is doing who had three hires who's doing the degree you're actually going and ending up at the same point as them um, in the same number of years. So they've done two years, you've done two years, you've already got an HND, but you can go straight into the third year of the degree with them. And some of the classes will be together and the programs will run alongside each other. And um, so they'll talk about the different courses that are available. They'll show some of their wonderful pictures of people who are loving their life um, and all the different courses they do and what's available and what the entry requirements are, just like I showed you with the St. Andrews. But as I said, the, the interesting thing about Highlands and Islands is because it's all over the place and, and there's some of it, if you're doing, for example, I, I think horticulture and some of that stuff, um, one of my friends 
um, was lecturing in horticulture in Dunoon, but most of his students were actually doing horticulture as, as one subject in a bigger program and they were actually at other campuses and so he was doing it through video chat and he was teaching them about horticulture uh, through video chat so um, there are lots of different courses available different places they do a lot of distance learning and connected learning um, for people and there's lots of things again you'd want to know what, what's available not just the courses after all the courses here they'll show you some of the other things that go on at the universities and the different campuses so they have different, uh, so afterwards, after all the degrees, what can you get, what can you do, all the different people they connect with. And um, so study and stay, all the different um, things about where you would stay if you're staying at different campuses and choosing your campuses and different accommodation. So as you can see, there's a lot of same stuff as St. Andrews, different stuff from St. Andrews. Um, with the University of Highlands and Islands, for example, if you're staying at, at the Perth campus, th there'll be some facilities, but they'll not be the massive sports centers that you have at some of the other universities. And um, the sports centers, the gyms, the, the facilities for universities are, are brilliant. Uh, if you're interested in sports um, and some of the courses that they teach in sports at some universities have such amazing facilities available to them. Um, there'll be less because it's split into lots of different campuses. As you know, um, there's no sports facilities in the campus at uh, Argyle College, but just down the road is the, the, the leisure centre and gym and the swimming pool. And, and if you're interested in sports, you can still do sports there. So um, one of the advantages of, of UHI is that there is a campus right in Dunoon. You don't need to leave home. It costs a lot less to live at home than it does to live away and so on and so on. Um, but sometimes people just want to get away and live somewhere else and do something different. Um, so have a look at um, the university websites, have a look at their prospectuses, have a look at their clubs and societies, um, have a look at how their funding works, their accommodation works, how to get involved and so on. Right, um, so open days are very helpful. If they're available to you, even online open days, go along and see what they're saying and listen to different things. Look at the website, look at the prospectus. And if you know somebody who already goes to that university or a similar university, um, ask them questions about stuff and see if they can find you answers. On top of that, there's other things that I would like to know about a university, not just the course. Obviously, I want to know about the course and the requirements and the forms I need to fill in and the, the accommodation and how I apply for that and the student funding and how I get that. And all of that needs to be done. Okay. But when I get to university, I don't want to think about all that stuff. I want to go and live there and enjoy it. I want to learn some things. I want to meet some people. I want to try some new stuff. And so I want to know a bit more about the university. And some of those things are a little harder to find out. What's the atmosphere like at the university? Is it, you know, because some of them are campus universities, campus universities tend to have a, a sort of closer banter and people connect a bit more. Um, they all go to the same nightclubs because there's only so many. So in St. Andrews, there's only many, so many pubs or clubs that you can go to. And so you'll, you'll run into the same people more often. Um, whereas in Edinburgh or more particularly Glasgow, you'll, if you're going to Glasgow University and go to a pub, you'll meet students from other universities because they're nearby. Uh, there's other clubs and pubs everywhere. You'll meet people that don't go to university. You'll be all over the place and doing all sorts of things. And so I want to kind of know what the atmosphere is like. You can find out a little bit um, from the open days, but generally students who go are the best way to find that out. How do you find out what the atmosphere is like? You know how friendly it is, and um, what's what what connects people. You you look at those uh, societies at St Andrews, 150 societies, and you think there's quite a lot of them are political societies or to do with religions, or and you think well okay so there's going to be all this stuff there, and it might come across like oh it's very highfalutin and very posh and so on, and I'm too down to earth for that kind of thing. But there's a hundred sports clubs, you know, there's lots of or 50 sports club and 100 teams, you know, there's lots of, uh, you know, I'm sporty, I like that kind of thing. So you want to kind of find out a bit about the atmosphere of the place. Uh, you want to find, oops, uh, sorry, 
uh, you want to find a bit about the locality and what it's like. So St Andrews is in the town of St Andrews and you can find out a bit about the town of St Andrews. Uh, but what is the locality of Edinburgh University like? Um, where it is, it's near the Royal Mile, um, it's connected with the, you know, with this building and this building and that organisation, you know, and they work with, you know, the zoo, which is miles away and all the different things and, and the, the sports centres that are nearby. They've got their own sports centre at Edinburgh University, but also the, the massive swimming pools just down the road, um, the, the Olympic-sized swimming pool in, in Edinburgh. Um, there's lots of other things going on round about. Uh, and what would that be like in your locality? Um, what other things are available? If I need a job, if I want to go to church, what, what's available around the locality? And you want to find out a bit about that stuff as well. University isn't just about the 25 hours you study your subject. It's about the whole thing. And so um, when you're getting on to the facilities, I'll, I'll come back to opportunities, the facilities and, you know, what, what will dorm rooms look like? If you're at St. Andrews, there's so many different uh, accommodations to apply for and you would kind of want to look at each one and look at what each one's like which ones are the catered ones which ones are the self-catering ones which ones have ensuite rooms which ones are just dorms or, or rooms in a row and and so on and so on you want to find out about those facilities what other facilities are about other buildings that are around that you can kick about in you know where is wi-fi available wi-fi is available everywhere in st andrews uh, but with the university of the highlands and islands you know, if you're studying at a particular college in the islands, um, and there, there might only be a Wi-Fi available in certain places and certain halls are, will have them everywhere. And so, so you want to know all about the facilities and what's available. And um, the opportunities that, that the courses lead to, there's a little bit of that in prospectus. When they say all of our students get a job, it's great. Um, well, I know students that have gone to this university and that university, and they say, 99% of our students gone. And I said, well, I know three students and only one of them got a job. So I don't necessarily agree with your, your measurement. It's because they write to a guy and he says, yeah, well, I've moved on. So, oh, well, that's okay. Got a job, moved on. Great, brilliant. Um, but I want to know what opportunities are out there. Um, the university I studied at, first of all, had a, a year out in industry. And I find that really helpful. I want to find out if I... Um, so we applied for these posts in, 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 in a, a company or in a government civil service department or whatever it might be. And they would pay us a third of what they would pay somebody else. Um, so you're not making a huge amount of money, you know, £10,000 a year or something like that. Um, but they're getting you to do a year's work for a lot less. And, but it gives you experience of work and it gives them experience of you and the, the the government department I worked for offered me an extra three months at three times the pay, um, but I'd already booked to go on holiday, so I said no, but they, there's opportunities like that. Uh, you want to find out what opportunities m things might lead to. As I said, my friend got the opportunity to do scuba diving, and suddenly he's got a job in Mexico um, doing that. I mean, he's Mexican, so that's not completely weird, um, but uh, the opportunities, you want to know what's available, what's available in terms of postgraduate opportunities, PhDs and things, or masters, that if you decided you wanted to stay in education, you could go into that, or teaching, um, and what, what is available to move into. The other thing is some of the courses, they don't really explain the opportunities. As I said, out of 15 universities in Scotland, maybe 12 or 13 of them will offer uh, psychology as a course. Uh, psychology uh, might have 30 students in their class, but I would reckon most of them are about 60 or 80. Okay, so you've got um, 700 students to 1,000 students doing psychology each year. How many job opportunities are there for a psychology student specifically? Um, whenever I was in Northern Ireland, one of my friends was in, did psychology, and she got offered the one place each that was offered each year in clinical psychology. All the other places to do clinical psychology were for people who did medicine. And to, so to be an actual psychologist, you needed to do medicine, not psychology. And so people who have a degree in psychology, I'm not saying it's a waste of time, but what they're looking for is a job that's open to anyone with a degree. Um, it's, it's the ability to study, the ability to learn, the ability to, to reason, that, that they're, they're really learning, um, rather than the subject of psychology, which in itself does not lead to many jobs. Even the likes of human resources, 
where psychology is somewhat helpful. The people who get jobs in human resources will either have done a specific course in human resources or they'll, they'll look at, um, you know, so, so should be doing this next time when we're talking about courses, but you should be looking at the opportunities that come out of the university as well. And as I said, one of the things that always interests me is the clubs and societies, the sports I loved, um, the games I wanted to play, the, the computer people that I loved hanging out with. I was a bit of a nerd, still am. Um, um, all the different things I wanted to try. I wanted to join the Christian Union. I liked hanging out with international students. And I, I would join this society, that society, this club, that club, because I didn't want to waste a day. I wanted to get stuck in and enjoy as much as I could about university. So hopefully you can find out for yourselves as much as you want about each university. I quickly looked at St. Andrews there. I quickly looked at UHI, but there's lots of universities there. And, and first of all, it narrow it down to the ones that do the subject areas that you're interested in. And then second of all, find out about each one and then put your applications in. Okay, we'll talk next time then about courses and subjects of study. Um, but hopefully that's been helpful today.